Hello, my name is Chris Matthews. I'm the programme leader for FDA Film and Photography. Uh, and just going to talk with you through some elements of the course and the facilities that we have. The programme has been running for seven years. Uh, it's currently going through a revalidation uh, with some updates to uh, modules. Um, so I will be looking at the proposed uh, new modules uh, or the new programme effectively. Um, so there's a few changes there. Um, and uh, we're largely based in the new high tech and digital center. Uh, and later on in the presentation, there's a link to YouTube where you can take kind of a virtual tour of the building. Um, so you can kind of look around and, and kind of see uh, all the equipment that we've got. Uh, so my preferred method of contact um, is ideally via email, um, first of all. Uh, so that's uh, Christopher Matthews at southdevon.ac.uk um, alternatively i mean we can arrange for a call on microsoft teams um, as well um, so um, probably easiest to, to email me first and then we can arrange for that um, if you want to talk in more detail so uh, the course uh, really focuses on the development of the theoretical and practical knowledge in both digital filmmaking and photography. Um, so, I mean, it's a fairly broad course. Um, really, the ethos is that following uh, completion of the course that you would be able to work in either medium, because um, certainly in uh, you know its current state in the creative industry, um, you are required to have uh, more kind of transferable skills. So um, it's likely that, you know, you'd be expected to be able to edit in Adobe Premiere, but also um, have a good understanding of um, still photography and vice versa. Um, there are still some elements of traditional photography within this course as well. So we do have a working darkroom. Um, so those are still elements. Um, the filmmaking elements uh, largely speaking, tend to be uh, purely digital, um, and uh, although there are kind of options to to explore experimentation with that um, in some of the later modules. Uh, so areas that you'd be studying are digital filmmaking, screenwriting, digital photography, um, developing professionally focused research skills, pre-production, post-production skills, uh, the history of film photography. Uh, and the theoretical approach is to understanding those mediums. So this is a course that's validated through uh, University of Plymouth. Um, so you study your first two years um, at UCSD uh, and then you have um, an option of progression, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail uh, at a later stage. So this is just a breakdown of the programme structure of year one or level four, uh, depending which way you look at it. And you'll notice that there are six modules and I'll just give you a brief overview of each one. Uh, so we have uh, developing collaborative practice. Um, so this is a module that's designed to encourage you to work with others, whether that be um, your fellow students on your course or other courses uh, or industry professionals. So uh, the idea of this this project really is to get you working with others, um, developing those kind of soft skills, uh, teamwork skills, uh, preparing you for uh, working in industry. Uh, the second module there is digital tools, software systems and applications. Uh, so this really is your software toolkit for the course. Uh, so it could be learning how to use things like Adobe Photoshop, uh, Adobe Premiere, um, Cinema 4D, for example. Um, so we do cover a little bit of interactive work here. So really just kind of learning how to use all the all the creative software that you're likely to use uh, in this course. Then next we have uh, introductory skills for film and photography. So this is a very kind of technical uh, introductory module. So less of a focus on the creative and more a focus on technical skills. So really kind of bringing you up to speed 
um, with the technical skills to support you through the course because um, it's quite possible that you might have underdeveloped skills in one of the mediums perhaps you're a more experienced photographer or a more experienced filmmaker uh, and this will help to support you um, to kind of um, fill in any gaps that you might have in your technical knowledge. Uh, then we have documentary. So in this module, uh, you'll explore both um, uh, film approaches to documentary and also uh, still image approaches to documentary. And then you can kind of decide upon a direction that you take that in terms of the practical work that you produce. So you may produce a documentary film, you may produce um, a set of images on a particular subject uh, that you're exploring. Uh, so again, quite a lot of flexibility uh, within the course, as you can see. <clears throat> uh, next module there is narrative. Uh, so this explores narrative theory and narrative structure, which is really understanding sequencing uh, in terms of storytelling. Uh, and uh, this includes um, an element of uh, script writing as well. So it's kind of understanding the process um, that script writers go through and how these are um, formatted and structured. And then finally, I uh, have understanding contextual referencing, uh, which is really probably the most theoretical module um, in the, the first year of the course. Um, so you'll have an area of study that you select uh, and you're assessed upon um, uh, an essay uh, for this module, so very much a theoretical one. So this is the structure of the second year programme, uh, or level five, um, and it's broken down into five modules, so a slight change here, um, which I'll explain um, as I get to kind of the last module there, which is the final major project. Um, so the first module is producing and directing for screen. So this is uh, very much a module focused on filmmaking, working in a production team, uh, producing and directing um, a dramatic piece. Um, and uh, that's really where we, we kind of work, um, work it really as a, as a residential trip. So we tend to kind of go away for sort of three days uh, work as a production team to produce a film. Um, so very much a close to industry experience um, in that one. Then we have uh, portraiture, uh, which is fairly self-explanatory. So uh, this is a stills based outcome module um, and it's approaches to portraiture. Um, certainly a lot of studio practice, um, setting up lighting, uh, use of medium format as well um, within the studio. Uh, and uh, developing uh, approaches to um, location-based portraiture, candid-based uh, portraiture as well. Uh, then we have negotiated research. So this is very much the theoretical module um, of uh, the second year. Um, so you have an area of research that you'll be exploring, whatever that topic may be. It might be an aspect of film or uh, a, a particular set of films or particular a movement within film um, or a, a set of images or a particular photographer or um, you know a, a question that you've negotiated with your your lecturer for this module um, so that one's assessed through an essay uh, usually around about 4,000 words so it's kind of a fairly extended um, essay kind of like your mini dissertation for the year um, as well as uh, kind of a, a presentation as well. Uh, and quite often students will present this work um, or a selection will at the research showcase as well, which uh, normally takes place in May. So it's a good um, opportunity to kind of disseminate your research um, and to, to, to kind of um, have questions asked um, and reviewed by a wider audience as well. Uh, then there is professional engagement. So this really follows on um, from the um, collaborative practice module in the first year. So um, in this module, we do ask that you um, 
select a client to work with, an external client, and you work with them on a particular project. So it could be a corporate video, or it could be a selection of images or a short film. Um, and we do support you with this finding um, options. You know, we do get a lot of commissions come through, um, but also you, you, know, you may want to start thinking um, during the year about, uh, or certainly during your first year about some of the options that you might explore with this module. And then finally, we've got the final major project. So uh, the slight difference with this one is, is this is a 40 credit module. So it is a larger module. Um, and this really is the culmination of all your studies um, through an exhibition and a final major project. So um, this is where you'll decide on um, what your final major projects may be. So it could be a film, it could be um, a photographic book. Um, this work will be exhibited uh, in an end of year show as well. And um, that's, you know, really kind of the culmination of your studies. And it's a good opportunity uh, to network as well. Also on the slide, you'll notice um, the semesters are listed there. Um, so some modules are uh, take place over semester one. Uh, some modules take place over semester two. Um, in some cases, modules will take place uh, kind of in a long and thin de uh, delivery method over two semesters as well. Um, so that's just to explain that one. So progression routes um, that are proposed in the revalidation with Plymouth for level six are Creative Media BA, Film Production BA, and photography BA. So these replace the existing media arts BA and TV arts BA uh, progression routes that are currently um, running. Um, so uh, it does give us a slightly broader choice. Um, as I said, it's subject to approval, but um, as I said, that's, that's kind of going through um, as we speak. Um, so you do get a bit of a broader choice there. So with the creative media, you know, perhaps if you're kind of generalising a bit more, um, you've got the option of film production if you purely want to go into filmmaking or you've got the option of the photography BA um, if you want to focus more on the still image. So uh, recent trips that we've been on, uh, we, we do the photography and video show at Birmingham NEC every year. Uh, got postponed this year, obviously, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, however, um, there will be a virtual uh, version of that in the new academic year, and then we hope to return to an actual visit uh, in the near future. Uh, overnight trips to London as well. We try and do that most years, um, or, or Bristol. Uh, and this the last year we went to London. Uh, so a range of exhibitions that we went to see, we went to the Tate Modern, the National Portrait Gallery, uh, Natural History Museum, Design Museum, Globe Theatre. Um, also went to uh, the Royal Academy to see Anthony Gormley's exhibition as well. Uh, international trips, uh, we try and run uh, at least one international trip per year. Um, and... Um, uh, we've been to in recent years to, to New York, uh, to Budapest, uh, to Berlin, uh, some of the recent um, destinations. Um, we were looking to uh, go to the United States again um, next or this coming academic year, but obviously um, with the current situation, um, you know, that may be difficult. Um, so we may have to look at. Um, a shorter distance uh, trip but uh, we try and do sort of a more um, long distance trip every few years um, and, and always at least one sort of European um, trip as well but it's a really good opportunity to have uh, uh, to experience different cultures and, and history and uh, different artworks uh, art museums um, and also to kind of give you somewhere to uh, photograph to produce your moving image projects as well uh, so it's, it's certainly beneficial to go on on these trips but they aren't compulsory 
um, it is kind of up to you um, but it, it just kind of adds to the um, uh, kind of the richness of, of, of the course really. So uh, we've got excellent facilities. We recently moved into the high tech and digital centre um, and uh, all of our teaching takes place in there. Um, I've actually attached a link because uh, this is probably the best way to see it at the moment certainly uh, is through a 360 degree virtual tour of the centre. So um, if you follow the YouTube link <clears throat> and you can actually scroll around uh, a bit on that as well. So yeah, make sure you do. Otherwise you might just be staring at a, at a door, <laughs> have a look around and um, you can kind of see the studios and things like that. Uh, so uh, yeah, in that um, video, you'll see, you know, the classrooms, the workshops, the studios that we have um editing suites we've got like designated editing suites and sound recording booths um, we've got a 90 seat uh screening suite as well which is great for kind of viewing work and viewing films and um, we have the um torbay film festival is based with us now so we had the first run of that this year um, so um, that will be uh, kind of continuing as well. So that's a really good opportunity to have your work seen um, at uh, an international film festival because it gets films from kind of all over the world now. It's been running a few years. Uh, we also have a working darkroom as well. For those of you that are um, still interested in using photographic film, um, we can still develop photographic film. We can develop black and white film or monochrome film um, relatively easily and print it as well um, on the enlargers that we have. Colour film, uh, we can develop uh, a little bit trickier, um, but it's it's certainly something that, that you can do a bit more specialist. Uh, and um, we can scan the negatives. Um, the process for colour printing is... Um, a little bit more complex and it requires total darkness which is uh, very difficult whereas uh, black and white photography you can kind of do under a red light um, so largely speaking with color work we would tend to to scan um, but um, I mean I shoot quite a lot of films still um, I'm currently completing my master's degree in photography um, and, and I probably shoot about 75% digital maybe 25% analog um, so I still shoot slide film um, so we do still develop um, those as well but have a look around the tour um, so you can kind of see what's there um, you should be able to see um, the photography lighting studio uh, the video studio with a green screen um, the uh, screening suite um, also some of the classrooms you'll see as well um, and obviously the editing suites as well so we've got designated editing suites you can edit in the classrooms so we've got Macs in the classrooms um, with the Adobe package on but if you want to work um, in a smaller booth um, to do sound recording get a bit of uh, you know, uh, a quieter um, setting to to record and to edit in, then you can kind of book those out as well. Um, we have um, a stores for media stores, which has um, still photography equipment and moving image equipment as well. So you can book lenses, cameras, tripods, microphones, uh, kind of flash guns, anything really. So we're very well equipped. Um, what I would say is uh, it's an advantage to have your own camera, um, certainly for stills, um, but we are equipped with um, cameras that you can book out. So if you're booking stuff out for stills, um, and we do have ones designated just for HE only, uh, which are Canon 6Ds, which are full frame cameras. Uh, we also have uh, Sony 4K uh, cameras for moving image as well, which are again, um, for the use of HE students. So um, I wouldn't suggest that you bought a camera for, or a, a kind of a 4K um, kind of camcorder camera, because obviously we've got those. Um, still cameras, um, you know, great to have your own camera, but you can obviously book them out. But if you've got your own, then, uh, you know, you've always got one. 
I would recommend that you get either a, a Canon or a Nikon if you do buy a camera body, um, simply because then you can borrow um, lenses from us. So it sort of extends, um, you know, the 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 uh, range of kit that you can use um, as well. Um, we generally use Canons now. Uh, but we do still have quite a lot of Nikon lenses. Uh, I'm Nikon based myself, um, but entirely up to you. I, I kind of use both, um, but um, can kind of advise you on that. Um, you don't need to go out and buy um, a top end camera. Um, really, uh, any kind of um, even a kind of entry level. Um, SLR or digital SLR is absolutely fine if you want to buy your own camera. Um, if you're using it for filmmaking, which you likely would be, um, I would just double check that um, it will shoot video, which generally they do, and that it will shoot at least 1080p um, for um, the pur purposes of what you'll need. Uh, reading lists. So there will be reading lists attached to... Um, attached to modules um, and um, what I would say at this stage just to kind of give you an idea of some of uh, the books that I would recommend reading prior to the course um, I've included three here um, you don't need to have um, the latest version of these books which is one of the reasons I've, I've, I've kind of put them on here um, you know they do tend to kind of reprint and, and, and update books and, and it's a good idea to get the latest version of books but in terms of these books um, there's some kind of uh, fairly sort of introductory things in there things that haven't changed significantly uh, and it will kind of just give you a bit of a, a an overall understanding of the basics, and it's a good place to start. So, uh, there's Guerrilla Filmmakers Handbook um, by Chris Jones, um, and that's been uh, around for well over twenty years now. But it's a really good breakdown of um, how the film industry works, um, certainly for independent filmmakers. Uh, and it's a very useful one more of a reference book you know you might not read it cover to cover I mean great if you do over the summer um, but it's very useful and I, I found my my copy very useful I've probably got a dog-eared uh, copy somewhere about 20 years old but um, certainly very useful it's got a lot of case studies in it as well and uh, it will really help you with uh, understanding um, some of the sort of the basics of the industry um, also, another book, uh, John Hedgeco's Introduction to Photography, a bit of an older book, this really, um, and it's the sort of thing you'll pick up quite easily, um, you know, second hand as well. So as I said, don't go for a, a newer version of this, really because this is a good one for understanding um, darkroom skills. Um, so obviously that, that hasn't really changed. Um, you know, it is very much a kind of an older technology now, but um, there's a lot of useful information here about camera settings, understanding shutters and apertures and things like that, and lenses. So things that haven't really um, haven't really changed. Um, and it, again, it will just give you a bit of a good grounding and it's something you can, you can pick up um, fairly easily um, at the library. Um, but again, doesn't need to be a, a newest version. Um, John Hedgeco actually died, I think, about 2012, something like that. So, um, you know, they, they do reissue these things, but um, um, it will certainly be more of a focus just on mainly darkroom skills and some of the early sort of digital um, skills as well. But really just about kind of understanding the basics of photography you know shutter speeds apertures isos things like that so it's it's a good one for that uh, and then finally there uh photography a critical introduction lives wells again there's lots of versions of this um and again don't um don't worry too much about getting a latest version i think you know if you try and buy a, a hardback version of this the latest copy you know the the charge you an astronomical amount but you can pick up a sort of old paper back copy of this um relatively cheaply or even um, free online and certainly get it in the library uh, but again it will just give you a good introduction to a uh, critical understanding um of photography um other books that you could look at really um anything 
by Susan Sontag. Susan T Sontag on photography um, is um, a good uh, introduction to the subject and, and will get you kind of wrestling with some of the um, debates around photography. Uh, also, um, anything by uh, Roland Barthes, um, interesting to look at, such as uh, image and text or mythologies, um, some interesting essays in there. So again, you know, just getting you kind of thinking critically, um, because those are the things that are probably the hardest to grasp. You know, the technical side of the subject um, is uh, perhaps easier to, to get to grips with than the the, the critical end um, so you know from from my experience of, of teaching I've been teaching over probably a, nearly 12 years now you know the critical end is the bit that that students find um, the hardest quite often um, so you know start looking at these things early on um, and um, you know it, it should help you so on to types of assessments. So there's no exams in this course. Um, the majority of assessments are coursework based assignments. So um, it could be essays or practical outcomes like a film or a set of images, uh, portfolio effectively. Um, in some modules, a presentation is assessed. Um, so like a, a, a practical presentation to to um, uh, your peers uh, and a um, uh, staff member or module leader. Um, each module is generally divided into two assignments. Um, so usually, uh, certainly in the practical modules, um, it's likely to be um, the planning and practical elements and then perhaps an evaluation might be the second assignment. Um, so yeah, no exams, as I said, um, purely, um, uh, kind of coursework based. Um, the course is significant practical content, I would say. So it's very much an industry focused foundation degree. Um, though it should be noted, obviously that there are still significant theoretical aspects as you'd expect of any, um, course or higher education course at this level. Um, and uh, finally, the this just to let you know, the support hub will be available to students after enrolment. So we have an excellent support team uh, at UCSD. Um, so any support that you require um, with your um, with your learning uh, for any reason, um, we've got an excellent support network um, that we can um, put you in contact with as well to make the make the most of your studies. Uh, so Moodle is our kind of online uh, learning um, resource uh, and this is where we can store uh, all of your module guides, uh, all of your lectures. Um, so if you have uh, sort of any presentations, um, the kind of the PowerPoints or keynotes will be here. Um, any other kind of resources really um, just on screen there is just uh, an example of um, that interface. Um, so on your Moodle page, you'll have a Moodle page for your course um, and your modules will be listed on there um, as well as course information. So there'll be kind of like the module handbook, um, any kind of links really that are useful to you. Uh, and your lecturers will put, or your module leaders and your lecturers will put um, resources on here um, for the modules. So if you select on the modules, um, I've got some example ones there on, on the left. Select on those modules and it will take you to um, a breakdown of all the elements within that module. Um, so it could be presentations, it could be links to articles, it could be um, templates um, that might be useful, things like storyboards, um, those kind of things. Um, through Moodle as well, um, we also um, submit work now. So we're, we're largely speaking a completely digital environment now um, when we submit assignments. So any workbooks um, are digital. Um, if they can be obviously done um, by hand, um, but then we, we obviously get you to digitize them and submit them digitally as, as, as a PDF. Uh, and we use uh, a system called Turnitin, uh, and Turnitin allows you to submit through Moodle 
um, and it also kind of checks over work as well just to make sure all the referencing's been done um, correctly um, so that's a, a really useful uh, resource for you to use as well um, so I think that's probably it for the course um, now um, just on the next slide um, there's just a link to the website uh, and also um, some links um, for kind of any one-to-one -one, uh, advice as well and a, a phone contact uh, also you can follow us on social media to keep up to date with things um, but um, otherwise I'll sign off now and uh, I hope to see you uh, in September Thanks. Bye.